Welcome to the Captain's Corner. <laughs> this is episode number 10. And today we talk about Shelter News, a partial um, exhale. And with me today is, of course, our Captain Kath Hoffman. Hi, Kath. Hi. Good to be back. We're Good to be back. Time. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> we took a little summer break, um, and of course, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of going on um, with with the shelter, and that is what we want to talk about today. Um, like we said, like it's it's a little bit of an exhale, but is it really an exhale? I mean, you and your your staff, you have been in this emergency situation for like a few weeks or months already. And I know like you had to lay off staff because like the you had to get out of the uh, of your current location. So now everything is like back. Um, so it's not September 30th anymore, which is like in three days. Um, Kath, what is the situation now? Please, um, could you update us on that? Yeah, you bet I can. Um, well, and you're absolutely right. The September 30th out you go is um, extended. And that was certainly is an exhale for us in that um, we know that we're going to have enough space to distance people appropriately. COVID's getting worse. Um, we're in an outbreak right now at Safe Harbor. Um, and we have been for a good two or three weeks. I think that that also helped uh, the city determine the local state of emergency for us with this shelter extension. You know, I think the outbreak helped. So it's a weird thing when you're a captain and you're grateful for an outbreak. Mm -hmm. It's not too weird for words, but it's almost what you you know, you feel like that kind of, and then how am I happy about this? And it, it was interesting because it's all we wanted was to be able to stay until we have a place to be, right? And so I thought that I'd be jumping up and down kind of when I heard, and instead I did find all I did was a partial exhale. And I know that that was true for the rest of my team. You know, that shelter team has been um, hanging by a thread. You know, there are staff that have found other jobs, uh, thinking September 30th was it. There are staff who decided they wanted to wait to see what would happen um, and maybe put other opportunities on hold. And of course, because of the outbreak, um, our staff can't work in two different sites. So if they had two jobs, they have to pick their other one. So staffing has really been a challenge. Um, I know my current team, they are tired, those guys. They're really tired. They're stressed out. It's been a really long haul. So, and that, you know, I thought about saying all that stuff. And then I thought, Ooh, what a Debbie Downer. Like, aren't you happy about anything, Hoffman? Like, you get to stay now. But I get to stay now until November 15th. Um, that's the new date as far as the city's local state of emergency as things stand right now that's when that will expire if things you know don't get worse so you know how do you hope for things to get worse but you almost do because we know what's going to happen if we do have to leave on november 15th so here we are in this position now you know operationally this is just a nightmare of stress um and, you know, I've often said I wish that the people who were making the decisions as far as how this has been playing out, um, I always wish they could see the ripple effect of that on my team. You know, it's like we're a yo-yo or something. Yeah. Or ping pong ball getting batted back and forth. Um, and like I said, I know people want us to leave. We're going to leave. Um, but it's not the time. November 15th isn't the time to evict someone into the cold. And that's what we'll be doing. Yeah. So so basically, I was just thinking when you were saying that, um, it seems like first first when I when I heard about it, I thought, oh, it's a good thing. But then I thought 
it seems like an extended death sentence. You know, you, you still know, like you have to yeah. get out, <laughs> but you know, yeah, it takes a little bit longer. longer. Yeah, we're so, on the great mile. So it's like, and you just talked about the ripple effect. Can you explain, like, for everyone um, listening today or watching the replay, like, what what is that ripple effect? Yeah, well, when we don't have an alternate place that's appropriate for people to be, then all of a sudden the RCMP don't have a spot to take people to that they find uh, in the community. The mustard seed doesn't have a place to refer buddy to who may be higher intoxicated and it's not appropriate from to be at the shelter at their shelter the hospital doesn't have a place to discharge buddy to um which is still real that they have to do that to shelter a lot because people still aren't housed right um our detox center there won't be a place for people to be before they get to detox after they get to detox uh before and after treatment uh we're just you know we're just making outcomes for people much messier than they need to be um and that ripple effect is big uh like i said it's uh it's not about us leaving the neighborhood as much as it is about not having a place for people to be at all uh right now we're on outbreak status um that's been extended by a month already. Uh, and we still have staff that are testing positives, clients that are testing positive. And um, so come November 15th, I don't know that that's going to change that much. And if it doesn't, uh, then we're really going to be hooped for spaces because we won't be able to have 26 at our main building anymore. We'll probably be able to only have eight, maybe 10 tops. So that's, you know, 70 people mm -hmm. or more that are out there. So, yeah, the, the issue is when that happens, and I've talked about this before, uh, there is this thing that goes on um, called a moral injury. And this is a very interesting thing, this moral injury stuff. Because I felt it for a long time, but I didn't know what it was called. And for a captain, a moral injury is like major. Like it's go, it's got all the seven stars in it. Like I got to pay attention. I, it's a big heads up. Mm -hmm. And because what I'm going to do is instruct my team in the shelter to turn people away through the winter from shelter, from a warm place to come into. So for them... I am inflicting what they refer to as a moral injury, something that you have to do that goes against your own core basic beliefs, mm -hmm. right? Guys in the war that had to go shoot people and they didn't want to, they all got morally injured, right? Those sergeants that had to tell them or whatever, you have to go shoot those people. They got morally, like I'm getting morally injured having to do it, right? Like you think about the ripple effect of that and you try and imagine, you know, I told a story before on Captain's Corner about my staff not being able to let everybody in that needed and wanted to come in. And okay. as a result of being turned away, mm -hmm. I had a, a young man on the streets who killed himself as a direct result. He wanted to come into the shelter and just have a quiet place to be. And he couldn't because we didn't have room. He did not have an addiction. He had a really bad anxiety and uh, depression. He just wanted to come into a quiet place. And I had a staff member who had to turn him away due to lack of room. And when we were debriefing that as a team, when it came her turn to speak, she said, um, I couldn't let him in. And I just felt that so big all over me. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I had to tell her that. And she had to do that. Like, she really had to do that. And this is a result, right? And what is it like in the winter when we're doing that? And we're nice and warm inside, you know? I've often said about we Canadians, it is not in our DNA to turn people away in the middle of the bloody winter. But that's the ripple effect. 
And my staff would have to do that a lot of times in the night. That's not a one-off like it used to be, you know, mm -hmm. where we were holding our breaths just to make sure we had enough space in this community. And if we don't get through this with a place to be, right, Chicken Louie, I'm going to be inflicting this moral injury on my staff and they're going to, and I could go to moral injury jail or something if there was one, like arrest me because yeah. I'm totally guilty. And so that's what I think about you people making those decisions that are making this happen without a place for us to be. Like, do you even think about that? And I think they do because I think they are compassionate people, but they're, They got to be compassionate political people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if those two things go together all the time the way I need them to. Obviously yeah. not. <laughs> so, Kath, how many people, like how many um, guests, like do you have? Like I know recently you posted, um, was it 70 that well, you've been yeah. sent away? What, what was the number? Our highest number in the last few months overnight has been 81. Mm-hmm. And that was in the, the few days it was raining a lot. Um, and typically we're running between 50 and 60 a night uh, mm -hmm. while the weather's good and stuff, right? But we, you know, we anticipated the need for 80 spaces come winter just to have them available just in case. Um, but we'll go down to who knows what, depending on COVID mm -hmm. and... Yeah what happens November 15th. So here we are being weird at the Harbor and hoping that our local state of emergency extends through till the end of winter. Yeah. It would be lovely. That would be our dream. And that's so stupid to dream that like I can't even stand it. My head's going to crack open. <laughs> yeah. So um, at, at talking about the state of emergency and um, like the city, um, we, we have like, a municipal election coming up yeah. and um, so I think this is a good opportunity for for people to to really find out what um what are opinions on on like where where do they stand like yeah. where where do the councillors stand that they going to um to elect and vote for so like what are good questions they could ask Kath? like i mean we all want help i think like nobody wants someone dying on the street in a cold canada winter night um so what what would be good questions to ask um well that is a super question and it's a question i've been struggling with myself right because at this beginning part, right? Like here we are we're going to have probably a majority of new counselors. Okay. Just starting to wrap the head around the madness of all of the stuff we've been going through with shelter in this city for the last 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like, it's going to take them four years to figure that out. I think I'm hoping not, but you know, and I think that they would, you know, because we're humans and we typically care about each other, they would want to do something that was good to help with this for sure, right? So they're going to tell me things. Um, but they don't want to believe that's even real, I find, because even when I was telling people that that's what was going to happen, um, they weren't listening, kind of, you know, they want to stop the crime and all the disaster, but uh, that seemed to be a real funnel focus. And of course, like I said, we get it. We're not welcome. Um, we got to go. So we're we're going to pack up and go as soon as someone's got a spot for us to go to, right? And until that time, common sense, every piece of logic says, let us stay in Canary Row until you have a place to put us and do something more for the businesses than you're doing currently because you're going to have to do something to help them and I can't be the one that helps the downtown businesses and I won't have a report card saying such and then telling me I'm doing a terrible job because there's still crime and a disaster mm -hmm. in the downtown or whatever they think may be going on um that's like you know I want to go and ask the current counselors that are running again you know when did uh, safe harbor turn into the bad guys 
Mm -hmm. The last couple of public hearings sure made it feel that way. So I, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to ask. And there's a lot to expect of a new council to come in and understand this. And they are going to want to be fair. They're going to want to listen. You know, anybody I vote for, I want them to listen to all the sides of the story, not just mine. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's a big job. So my question, you know, would be, how open is your mind? I want to know how open-minded you. I remember I voted for a guy a couple of years ago because I asked him a question about the supervised consumption sites because he kept hearing about needles and stuff, right? And, or needle, actually it was needle um, distribution. Mm -hmm. And he thought that was nuts. He said, well, when I, like, I thought, no, we shouldn't be giving people needles and blah, 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 blah. And then he said to me, and then I realized, how do I know? I don't know anything about this. And he started doing some research and then he said, holy doodle, um, I think we have to do this. And I thought, okay, you're the kind of guy I want to vote for because you're saying, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to find good research. I'm going to talk to the shelter. I'm going to come visit the shelter. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to find out and decide and I'm going to keep an open mind while I do it. And mm -hmm. addiction and all the behaviors associated has shut many minds, very tightly closed doors on that. So that would be my question. And to have a real conversation, like, what do we do? How, how would you think you can make the downtown businesses happy and keep safe harbor there until they've got a new spot? How would you think you could do that, you know? Um, have you been down there? Have you, you know, uh, yeah. So it's, I think that there's, you know, lots of ways to, to do that and to, to ask those questions. I know I want to, I have questions too, but I also found out that I have to be political when I ask them too. So it's taken me a while to gather them together <laughs> in my head properly. <laughs> Because it's really hard. It's really taken a toll on the harbor, all of this yo-yo stuff. And operationally, it's a nightmare. How do I hire staff till November 15th right now in, the, in an outbreak? Like, come on, everybody. Mm -hmm. Give your heads a shake. Um, but, you know, there's, yeah, everybody, I was going to say there's lots of good happening. And, of course, there is. But. Man, we're tired. We're all really tired. And we need to get filled up with some energy again. However, we can do that for each other. And yeah, keep hoping that, you know, the harbor lights are going to shine bright. Um, they have to. Because doing nothing is not an option. No. Hey, but you know what happened? No, what happened? Well, I'm going to tell you this, and this is way cool. <laughs> uh, United Way kickoff luncheon. Okay. At the, they did a drive in thing at the carnival and they had popcorn. And what happened when I was leaving there? I was just going to my car and this chick comes running after me and she goes, Hey, hey, excuse me, Captain. And so I turned around and she introduced herself to me and she said, My name's Natalie and I watch your captain's corner all the time. And I just wanted to say thank you for doing that. And I said, are you like my fan? <laughs> and she said, yes. And so I want to do a shout out to Natalie, who's my fan, and say, Natalie, I never had a fan. Not <laughs> awesome. And I love you for saying hello to me. I didn't get her last name or anything, but I just thought that was really cool that she did that and she was my groupie or something. Was awesome. Somebody's awesome. watching us. Somebody's watching us out there. And it's Natalie. I'm sure there's Natalie and many more Natalie. So uh, people watching today or replay or live. Um, let us know if you're a fan. Us, like Captain in real life or even here, like uh, do a shout out, shout, <laughs> shout out uh, and thumbs up for her and her team. I think this is, um, yeah. So I think it's really has been like a, a, a really good um, way to 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 share what is going on like um, with the harbor but also uh, in the community and and for everyone to to 
yeah to get in contact with us so right yeah. now here i'm just looking at all the comments kathy i don't know we have 10 comments here on our um <laughs> on our live um uh people saying we love you kath and uh hugs to you i know it feels sure. like i got more fans already yeah many like we have um I, let, let me see who is here with us ashley um robin tasha jody uh, Kristen, Melissa, Diana, Dirk. Um, you right have lots of. Guys. <laughs> right on, you guys. <laughs> well, and you know, oh, what, you awesome. said, what you said earlier was important because you said it's not just about safe harbor, and damn straight, it's not. Because when we talked about that ripple effect, you know, about what's happening with the shelter and how it affects the RCMP, the hospital, all the other nonprofits downtown. Um, the ripple effect is big and yeah, I never want it to be seen as just safe Harbor. My goodness sake, safe Harbor is nothing without everybody. Um, and so that's really important to know that it's not just going to be us turning people away. It's going to be the hospital turning people away. It's going to be the RCMP. It's going to be the social diversion team. It's going to be the outreach team like, holy doodle. I should do like moral injury school for everybody. They're all going to need to debrief those yeah. feelings. Like, you know what, before um, I, I we talked about this topic, I wasn't really aware about this moral injury issue. But like if I like imagining being that person that has to send someone away in the cold and, and I know um, this person might not survive and yeah. my fault, like, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I shared it, my, that, you know. Yeah, I shared it with my partner this morning, um, and uh, Dirk, and he said I would, I would let, I would let them in. Maybe there's an overflow part. I would just secretly put them somewhere. But um, I guess I know. And yeah. guess what? I had to let a staff go, a wonderful staff go, because she couldn't do it, and she decided to let them in anyway, secretly. And man, I couldn't blame her. I couldn't blame her. I thought, Hoffman, what if that was you? Could you do it? Could you do it? What would you do? And so, I got to tell him to do it. You know what, Kev? I think this is even worse because you first you are you are, you are putting them in the situation that uh, they have to turn someone away, and it is not their job to do that, and it goes against their belief and values. And then they decide, okay, I can't do it. I want to save this life. And as a thank you, you come. And you have to, uh, yeah. Have, they yeah. have to. So that is even worse. Yeah. Talk yeah. about a ripple. Hey, okay? talk about a ripple. So yes, we're not going to let Safe Harbor stay at Cannery Row. Okay. Here's the ripple. Here's what we mm -hmm. warned you about. Here's what the people are going through because of that decision. Mm -hmm. And not because it's Canada rural, but because there's nowhere else for us to be. And that in itself is really sad. Amen. Amen. <sighs> okay. Did, yeah. Thank you very much for the update. Um, Thanks for being my fans, you guys. <laughs> there's another fan. Terry just said, uh, I would be starstruck, Kath. Uh, I'm a social work student and cool. would be so honored to interview with you at some point. Cool. So, Terry, um, we have to make a connection to Kath. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you all for being on our live today or um, watching the replay. Thank you for for your comments. Thank you for supporting Safe Harbor. And yeah. please, um, with the upcoming municipal election ahead, ask um Ask the the uh, people you want to vote for about about their strategy if they have visited the, the harbor. What what their opinion is and their strategy on how to go forward. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Steady as she goes. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. Bye. Bye.